it is known, Elf and Leeds, if you don't give it a chance, you can easily categorise it as, like, you know, fanboy, fanboyism. Because it does start off, there's a lot of nudity, there's a lot of violence, really graphic violence. It reminds me, people put off by it by the first episode, because there's a lot of violence, because Lucy breaks out of the facility, and she's, like, nude all the way through it. And she, like, literally turns people's heads off, rips them apart. There's loads of blood everywhere. Everyone gets killed. And, oh, it's proper violent stuff. It's sick. It's fucking sick, is what it is. But it's necessary. It's absolutely necessary. This is why I'm comparing it to Cannibal Holocaust. This is how you do it right. Because, yeah, I don't need to go about Cannibal Holocaust, but... This is what how you do it. Elf and Lee does it perfectly. It shocks you. Some of the bloody st themes it tackles. This is ah, oh, I mean that one we Boomy Mayu, where she were fucking abused by her dad. That tackles it perfect because it shows like part of her past. The reason she runs away from home is because her dad abused her, and it, all it does it shows you like. He kind of walks in room, and she walks in room, and he says, "Take your clothes off," like in a right funny voice, and she does, and then bends over, and then that's it. You don't see anything, and it's all your imagination, and then it just cuts. As soon as the clothes are off, that's it. And you learn, you know, don't you? Inst you know what's going to happen, so it just cuts to her on the streets running away. That's how you do it. It still shocks you. You don't have to see. Just images. Your imagination is better. Another thing, I know people go on about nudity in it, but the nudity is never actually sexual. Not once is it sexual. You could argue, which I actually agree with, I have checked this through second time watching, whenever there's nudity, it's to show vulnerability. It's like the bit like, um, like all the way through the start, for instance. You know what I mean? It's like the bit, you know, um, Karama's daughter, when she, like, she's, like, slapping Nana everywhere, and she rips her clothes off. It's like, she can tell the vulnerability. You don't give a shit. It's really weird. There's loads of bits like that, but it's funny as well. It uses it to make you laugh, and it works. I don't know how. It shouldn't, but it does. I don't know how to explain it. You have to watch it in order to understand the only problem, well, there's two. The first one is that there is the, some of the voice acting really bad. I mean, oh, like not quite as bad as Resident Evil, but it's nearly there. Be like, Yuka's voice actress is atrocious, really, really bad. She just, she don't understand how to do a job. Bro, I don't know. She's she goes over the top all the time. Oh, well, what are you doing, Koda? She's always really high pitched. There's no need to be that high pitched, love. Not all people's voices are that high pitched, trust me. So, yeah. That kind of gets annoying, but after like three episodes, you get used to it and it's fine. Some of them are similar as well. Like Mayu and Nana have incredibly similar voices. And it's very weird, like, Mayu is supposed to be 14, it? and it's like, you fucking jerk it. She looks about eight, but she's supposed to be fourteen. It's like it's a bit over the top that. I mean, come on, she's not that old. I'm, she's supposed to be fourteen. I can't believe that. And the, the way it ends, oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. It's the wheat fucking rips your emotions through you. It's amazing. Very good. Oh wow. One of the big reasons why it's so good, even, is the music. There's one tune. The main theme, Lillian. It's just, it represents everything about it. It's such a sad tune. But it's so warm. And it's really good. I, I'm, do you know what? I'm going to put another video on. Uh, the music box version, that's my favourite one. It's just represents everything. That's where they first hear it. Music box version of Lilium. Why can't you get it? 
you can't actually get it and it's straight and round because I love it. But there is a piano sheet for it. I'm going to show you that some other time. I'll upload that and show you. But, oh, it's so tranquil and... There's no... I don't want to go on about this because I want you to watch it. You're going to have to take my word for it. It's amazing. It's just so good. Anyway. The only problem is, at the end of the series, it's a terrible way to end it because there is no second series and it le leaves it at a point where there should be another series. But there's only 13 episodes. Apparently it weren't that popular, which is annoying. I don't even think, it didn't even get aired in the US, which is a shame. I think if it did get aired, it'd have a lot more fans. And there'd be a lot more people. It, could, it got. I think they showed it over here on this channel, which would have been a Sky channel because I didn't have it. I think they did, but not a lot of people watched it because it weren't heavily advertised. So yeah, it's, it's a DVD only thing, and it's not fair. There's a lot of animes which aired in America, and they get a lot of recognition, and they're not half as good as this. This is an amazing program. You can, they lop in your eyes. It's about as good as it gets. So you know what? Despite the fact that there is no sequel, and it teases you, teases you, it teases me a lot. I give it five stars, five fucking fingers. Oh, wow! Buy it now. If you love anime, if you like anime, buy it now. Even if you don't, even if you've not given anime a chance. Just try it, please. Just get it a go. You got no to lose. Anyway, this is Slime Bob. Thanks for watching. And goodbye.